Hey guys, King of Charmanders here. Today I bring to you a video on the huge update for version 74. Light Bowgun and Lance buffed. Finally, for these two weapon types. After screaming and kicking the door. Well, we already knew they were working on something, but dang, this is actually a lot better than I thought. April 9th, 2024 will be a day in the history of this game as they released a new version. And this update features a lot of adjustments and fixes, but the biggest update of this version our buffs for the light bow gun and the lance. All right, let's just jump right into it. First, we're gonna start off with main features adjusted or changed. So the urgent quest difficulty can be lowered from six stars to five stars now. If you don't know before, it used to be like 10 to nine, now eight to seven, now you can do six to five. Small monster hunts now take less time with a shorter unsheathing motion. So before, Small monsters, you used to have a longer sheathing, it would longer, longer for you to take out your weapon, so they shorten that, and there's actually a noticeable difference, which is actually really cool. So, thankfully, they did that, because we kill thousands of monsters every day, as in the small category. So, it's nice to have it go a little bit faster. And last but not least, for this section, equipment details for Light Boga now show information about ammo, and shows capacity, recoil, and reload. This is huge! As you see in this example right here, it will show you exactly what your capacity is as well as if it's low, medium, high, or faster. There's actually a lot of like descriptions, but this is if you have reload speed and recoil down. So if you're equipped with like reload speed 3, etc., it will show your stats when you have it. As you see right here in the middle, my Wrathbuster has recoil down and reload speed 3. So you will see the stats with that. If you don't have them equipped, or if you just look at the weapon itself, as you see right here, you will see the normal without recoil down or reload speed, what the normal stats would look like. So as you see for the Wrathbuster, it's actually a lot slower than it would be if you had reload speed 3 or recoil down 3, which is really awesome. So for new players or for expert players already for the Light Boga, now you don't have to play the guessing game. In addition, a confirmation screen will appear when you use Rarity 4 or higher materials to forge, upgrade, and overgrade equipment. If you don't like this, you can check a box so it doesn't show again. This is great if you're upgrading multiple times, but again, it's only Rarity 4 and above. So this really helps if you are going to accidentally upgrade and use your Wyvern Gem Shards to put a piece of armor to grade 8 and you don't mean to do it, this is the fail safe to do that. Again, if you don't like this, just check the box below and make it disappear. But it's only for anything above Rarity 4, so I recommend you keep it on just so that you don't accidentally do what I did and make two pieces of gear that go up to grade eight when you don't need them to because you accidentally fat fingered the overgrade button. You can also swipe left or right to switch between loadouts on the equipment screen. Focus text now includes the charge blade. It was always applied if you had focus, if you were a charge blade user, it was just never in a text. Now you see in the text, it will say charge blades increased percentage, etc. on there. And the icon image of the material Puke Puke Sack has been changed. I don't I don't even know why it was changed. I I don't get it, but you know what? Okay, cool. That was super random, but I guess it just looked too similar to another item or something, so they changed the icon image. And now we're gonna move on to the best part of this update: the weapon rebalancing and the buffs for the two weapon types, starting off with the lance. The Lance has now increased damage for multiple attack actions. The dash attack's movement speed was slightly increased. You now have reduced vulnerability after certain attack actions. And dash attack will not activate if you are too far from a monster and you will slide instead. So if you're too far away, you're going to slide instead of using your dash attack where you would tap and upward swipe. So just keep that in mind, if you are out of range, you will no longer do dash attack if you do that. You're going to start sliding towards the monster instead. But that's not all. You also have knockback transition from guarding to guard dash is smoother. Increased movement distance when thrust is activated while away from the monster. And other minor adjustments have been made. I'm not sure what they mean by minor adjustments or anything like that, but yeah, this is really solid for the lance. 
And the second weapon that got a buff due to the weapon rebalancing is the light bow gun. And as someone that's also using a light bow gun a lot because it's my secondary fire attack weapon and I want to get the light bow gun and every other weapon of gold, I'm starting to love it. And it just got buffed! First off, we have the special skill fill gauge rate increases for normal and sticky ammo. Which is really great because most light bow guns have normal ammo and sticky ammo is incredibly powerful and you will now get an increased rate by landing these shots. You also have increased buildup value affecting certain stats, ailments, and part breaks for sticky and slicing ammo. So part breaks for slicing ammo if you're trying to cut off tails etc that just got increased. And sticky ammo if you don't know and you're not a light bow gun main it can stun if you aim at the head. So. This increases the buildup for the sticky value. It's going to be really interesting because I want to experiment with Slugger and to see just the stun potential since the buildup has been increased for sticky ammo. But don't even worry about it. If you don't do those types and you like spread damage, guess what? Spread ammo damage actually increased. So if you like being up close and personal and sticking your shotgun in front of their face, bam, you can just fire away and knowing you will have increased damage. But that's not all, as Pierce Ammo's number of hits increased, but damage decreases after a certain number. So it operates a lot like a bow, your first couple of shots will do more damage, and then the rest that go through it do less. But it's pretty cool that Pierce Ammo is getting, like not just Pierce Ammo, but all ammo types actually got a buff, and it's really cool to see the Light Bowgren finally gets the respect it deserves. In addition, there is various other minor adjustments. And now the not so cool things, but you know what? They might be good for some. We have the fixed issues. The UI not displayed while hunting. This one is actually kind of annoying. I think I got it before and I was like, what's happening? So I have to restart my app and then redo the hunt. For the charge blade, it's difficult to evade sideways. This was actually a thing where I figured was kind of weird because when I was using the charge blade, sometimes I would, like I mentioned, I'm trying to get all the gold medals. So I'll do some weapons here and there. And I was like, why is it a little, I feel like it's harder. And I guess I was right for the charge blade as far as evading. Incorrect outcomes during hunts. So I'm not sure what that means. I don't know if that means they fix the whole thing where you kill a one of those like small Jagresses and then you get wing drake hides instead. So might be something like that. Field unlock timing for Pink Rothian was incorrect. It unlocks upon clearing chapter 9-4 of the season story now. Honestly, I didn't notice this before and Pink Rothian was so dang rare. I don't know if anybody actually noticed it as well. And last but not least, we have others. They are experimenting to enhance matchmaking of Huntathons in regions in Japan. From the first to the fifth monster, each lobby will be matched with a distant point, which is a farther hat. So I'm guessing what happens is that if you can't find anybody for this one, they'll like SOS flare or something like that to another hat point and be like, hey, you want to join this one? So it, I get it, you know, lobby will say expanding recruitment range when this happens and targets for implementation are subject to change. What I mean by I get it is that Japan, obviously, along with Hong Kong and other places, have a lot of players. But it makes sense to give them the testing ground. But wouldn't that be a little accurate, you know? Because, you know, there are places that don't have a lot of punters in it. You know, like America or the place where you just screwed up, which I'm about to get to my point in a sec. But yeah, yeah, hopefully you're doing well with that. Anyways, I'm about to just roast in the next section. In closing, I was super happy to see that Lance and Light Bowgun finally got the buffs they deserve. These weapons have been severely underpowered for a long time. I think this puts the light bow gun into the A tier at least. Or if you have the most powerful bow, light bow guns, definitely S tier type weapons for whatever they're weak against, etc. The Lance, I feel, is still a lot of work needs to be done with it, but this is a start. So hopefully you'll get more adjustments in the future as you Lance mains, say, and provide feedback. Now... Speaking of roast, remember I told you I was going to roast? As for the hunt-a-thon stuff, the hat stuff, just make remote hunting a thing. I get why Asia is the focal point of the game, but just like how they messed up spawns for other countries, we deserve more. So y'all thought I was going to slide when it came to the Canada, UK thing, and other areas having their spawns disappear out of nowhere. Now, given Capcom, you fixed it really quickly, but let me tell you something. Instead of doing all this experimenting and everything like that, just 
give us remote hunting. Make it a paid track, which is probably what you're going to do. But also give a like five hunts for free a day. We are, can already do hunt-a-thons for free every three hours. Why not do the same thing for our remote hunt, our remote hats, etc. I'm pretty sure elder dragons are going to be really hard to take out on your own. So it would be nice to have some help, you know, for the countries you kind of screwed over. As long as those, along with those solo player places like, you know, the West, the United States and other countries and rural players in general that don't have the communities that those nice big community. Yeah. OK, you know what? I'm done with it. But yeah, just make remote hunting a thing. With that being said, we deserve more and Please do me a huge favor, like, subscribe, and comment for the YouTube algorithm. I'll probably do another video explaining what these buffs are and doing comparisons of it. So look out for that video in the future. But good luck on your grinds. Hopefully y'all are getting quality quests done and you're looking forward to the future events. Like the Thunder event and of course the long-awaited Devil Joe event. And I will see y'all on the next video.